Yeah, no, it probably all started. Um, I got offered a job uh, to work for Sheikh Hamdan, who really had, I was just starting up, and the, the, the brief was um, to buy a farm in Ireland uh, and to buy 20 mares and raise the produce with 20 mares. So it, it, the, the start of this thing was going to be very, very small, but as we all know in history, what happened afterwards, it just grew into what it grew into, you know? So when I started up with him, um, you know, he was pretty young and I was very young, you know, I think I was about 27 when I got the job. We ended up buying, through Adrian Nickel, believe it or not, actually, he was sitting in the Siebel townhouse one night, I ended up buying Nouvelle Star. That was the first one Shay Cam Dan bought and he ended up, she won the Linnithgo in his colours, which is a very good race over Cup Week. And then Dad went to Kentucky Sales and met Shay Cam Dan. Hamdan is a very, was a very reserved man, quite a shy guy. And um, th they shook hands and they got to talk and they talked for an hour. I mean, most times, you know, you'd always be in a situation where it was shaking hands and then there was a bit of sort of silence and everything else. But Colin, they just hit it off straight away. And Colin became a bit like a sort of second father to him. And um, th this extraordinary relationship just started. It was cemented within five minutes of meeting each other. And of course, that continued the whole way through the Hayes family, right away to, to where it is today. And they sent a horse called Actalac down. And Actalac ended up Melbourne Cup winner, Horse of the Year. And I remember Shay come down ringing me in the middle of the week uh, prior to the Melbourne Cup saying, uh, saying uh, Colin, I think there is, uh, saying, I think there is a mistake, he said, in this, uh, with Colin. He uh, is going to run Actalac on Saturday, and then he seems to want to run him on Tuesday. So I said, yeah, that, that happens in Australia. I said, shake him down. They will run him on the Saturday to keep him, freshen them up to run him on the Tuesday. And he said, no, 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 this is not possible. And I said, well, I'm afraid to say I think it is. And we ran at Talak in the, in the McKinnon on the Saturday, she won. And then he came back up and he won the Melbourne Cup on the Tuesday. And to the day she had come down, till the day he died, he said, I cannot believe that happened. He sent me, at Talak was the first horse he sent me. And we won the Melbourne Cup. And uh, then afterwards, there was Al Morad in June. You know, he's won two Melbourne Cups and a Caulfield Cup and a, with Fra and a uh, uh, Cox Plate with Al Morad. And uh, we've been lucky together. A lot of those original imports, Al Morad, Al Shinfara, Fra, um, that was before people were bringing imports down regularly. And uh, so he was, him with Robert Sankster and my father were the originals to bring in the imports. <laughs> Mahasin was a wonderful story. It was, she was my first ever visit to the Gold Coast. Uh, and Hubert Berg and I flew out. We were staying in the Sheraton Mirage, and I'd never seen anything like this in my life. You know, I was, yeah, taking the new boy, if you know what you mean, taking him out there. If, for, as I say, my first time there, so I was on best behaviour and keen as mustard. And we went round and we looked at our horses and we did our shortlist. And CS decided the one filly he wanted was this Biscay filly, uh, and to make sure we didn't miss her. We vetted and everything else and we went off. And she wasn't selling till a certain time of the day after lunch or something like that. So I said, come on, we'll go back to the hotel and we'll lie by the pool and have a couple of lobsters and a few bottles of rosé. Well, he's, I'm sure it would be in his second bottle of rosé, enjoying a, a number two lobster thinking, Jesus, what a great place this is. You know, the sun was shining and we were eating lobsters and drinking uh, Chardonnay, but Angus wasn't relaxed, you know? And he's a very, Angus would be sl probably slightly di different to me because he's, he's more of a, um, what I would call, he's more of an attention to detail disciplined person, probably. I know you probably won't believe that, but he actually is. Uh, and I kept saying to him, I thought we ought to get back to the sales complex. Anyway, in the end, he said to me, if you're that worried about it, go and ring up and see what lot number they're on. I went up to the telephone by the swimming pool and I rang 
Magic Millions, and I, I said, uh, what lot number are they on? Three lots before she went in the ring. So we, I realised we had absolutely no chance of getting there in time, so we panicked. And... So I said to Angus, leave everything, just run. And we legged it into the car, legged it out there, got out there, and I looked up at the board, I'll never forget it, it was a lot number after, she was being led out, and the next number was up on the board, we missed it. And I thought, my God. And my heart sank, I could see this at the end. My first visit to Australia would be my last, and I would never get a job again. What am I going to say to Colin? And then Colin appeared around the corner. And he said, he said, well done, boys. Great bye. And I said, Colin, um, I'm afraid we didn't get it. And Colin was about, I think at this stage, about to literally castrate the two of us. So we shot up to where she, to the start, to the shed row where she was. And uh, Michael Cecilian was selling her, I believe, and we rushed around the corner and said, what did you get for the biscuit, Philly? Great, so we haven't sold it. Hubie, being the smart little businessman that he was, he asked what they wanted. Not only did we buy the filly that we'd missed, but we actually got her at a bit of a discount as well. For about 50 grand less than what we had to give for her. And uh, she turned out to be Mahassan. Wider on the track as Mahassan as they straighten up. Triskay on the outside, Satellite Bay on the inside. Zedegar is clear now. Mahassan is coming after it very quickly. Mahassan has taken the lead with 100 metres left to go from Triskay and Caddy Lennon. Mahassan is racing clear. And Mahassan has got the blue diamond one. She wins it well by a length and a half. Kenny Ladd second. It's absolutely true. I mean, God, I, 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 I nearly did poos in my pants. I tell you, I just know, I couldn't believe when I looked at that bid board. I, to, to this day, you've actually got me sweating now thinking about it. So Sheikh Hamdan came down in 1988, November 1988, I believe it was, um, for, the, for the Cup Carnival. Um, and that was actually, sadly, the only time he did come to Australia. Uh, but he sort of fell in love with it from there. That visit had a lasting experience on him, really, impression on him, really, because he went to the Melbourne Cup, and as we all know what a Melbourne Cup day is like, it's just, there's nowhere else in the world you see a day's racing like there is on Cup Day, you know? Colin Hayes managed to train Mahasin to win the Maribyrnong plate, I think it was. Colin Hayes had obviously primed this filly because Sheikh Hamdan had planned to come for a while and Colin had wound this filly up to make sure she was ready to show her best on the day he was there. And out came Michael Clark, who was riding her, and they were about to walk out and Sheikh Hamdan suddenly turned to Michael and he said, and don't be hard on her, it is her first race, so I don't want her having a hard race. So I could see the Hayes father and son exchanging glances, which I didn't understand at the time. So Michael Clark came up the straight like John Wayne, he never missed her, and she won by a whisker. And I've always said that's why we're still in Australia 35 years later, the fact that they managed to get that filly to win when Sheikh Hamdan was there. David Hayes went off to Hong Kong. Sheikh Hamdan decided he didn't want to be involved anymore. And we ended up down to literally two or three horses at one stage. And then when David came back, I tried to persuade Sheikh Hamdan to reinvest in the Australian market. Um, and rather reluctantly he let me go down to Sydney and luckily from the first crop back we ended up with Nadim who won the Blue Diamond and sadly underbidder on Miss Finland which would have really helped but uh, at least we got one good horse out of it and uh, from then on he, he was kind enough to let me come down most years to either Sydney and or Magic Millions to try and buy some horses. Oh, Angus has been pivotal. Um, I was just fortunate enough to be the trainer um, and I would help Angus at the sales and uh, it was his call ultimately. But Shabwell had three ways of bringing a horse into the stable. Um, buying yearlings and, that, and they were very successful yearling buyers. Bringing in English imports, well history says how good they were at that. And then breeding. And a lot of these, it's a bit sad for us having a look at all these wonderful families in that, that was the breeding operation that Sheikh Hamdan was building up to with all these stakes winning fillies. And now the uh, progeny are going through the sale uh, and uh, you know, they're diamonds in the rough. You know, there were two Melbourne Cups and three Caulfield Cups and I don't know how many blue diamonds.
of course, in the middle of it was Zabil, who's one of the all-time great sires. So um, Shabwell for Lindsay Parker going to be sadly missed, and Sheikh Hamdan was such a lovely man, racing enthusiast, um, who put the horse first. So um, they don't grow on trees, those sort of people. Uh, Sheikh Hamdan's been a great supporter of, of mine and David's, and uh, it's his second Melbourne Cup, so mm -hmm. we've won the Caulfield Cup, the, the Sydney Cup, the Cox Plate for him. He's been, he's been sensationally lucky here. And I've been extraordinarily lucky um, to have been pretty much surrounded by two families who are, have their feet right in the soil of the industry in Australia, the Hazes, uh, on the training side, and they've been fantastic advisors. I, I was a, became a huge friend of David's, and, and as I said, starting with Colin, who was, took me under his wing, and, and they taught me so much. And, and then, you know, on the breeding side, I couldn't have been better advised or luckier to end up with all our mares at Yarraman. Um, the Mitchells are wonderful, as everyone knows. They tell it as it is, as the expression is. The relationship between Shadwell and Yarraman came about through um, my and Harry's friendship with originally Hubie de Berg and obviously Angus Gold. Arthur and Harry, and Bill, were obviously out there uh, when they started Yarraman, but they learned their business back in Ireland or in England. You know, so they came back up as the same sort of age as I was. So we had a good connection then with the boys. So when we started up having horses, then uh, the first place I said was, uh, well, we'll go to Yarman Park, because it was the Mitchell relationship. When they stood Jern at stud at Lindsay Park, who they raced and won the Melbourne Cup with, and then I think they realised that the, with the stallion power in the Hunter, they needed to have some mares in the Hunter Valley. So through our relationship with them, and we'd already had some mares for plants of theirs, um, the mares started to come off the track, started with one or two, and grown and grown into what it is today. These sort of dispersals don't come along very often. I mean, Sheikh Hamdam and, and through his agent, Angus Gold, have spent years and years and years building up these fillies. And uh, Angus had a great, uh, he had a great eye for buying really good bloodstock. And so many of these mares in this dispersal, not only are they very well mated with very good pedigrees, but they are also very good racehorses. I think we're selling altogether 38 mares and fillies, of which 21 are stakes winners. So what we've been trying to do over the last few years is sort of wheedle down the numbers, get rid of the lesser performing mares, all that have been slightly disappointing at stud, and, and build up the quality. So to that extent, uh, I would say the future of the stud was very much ahead of it, if that makes sense, because of those 38 mares, 29 of them are 10 years old or younger. So um, a lot of these young stakes performing mares were, have either got their first or second foals on the ground and haven't even had a runner yet. So, you know, I, that's why I think it's exciting opportunities for, for people to come in and buy these young stakes class mares. Um, and we've got seven of the older mares that have already bred stakes winners. It's a lovely big mare, Corfila, obviously being a Group 1 winner, she's going to be one of our stars, but I mean, I'm sure we're going to get interest from around the world for these mares. It really is a unique opportunity to, uh, you know, for people to get hold of families, you know, lovely types, very good movers. He respected his job to the sense that he really worked incredibly hard at sales, and that shows you the results that so many of these mares are very good race mares. I mean, I don't know how many Blue Diamonds won and been placed in, things like that. So, uh, you know, these mares are truly a, a lovely group of mares. Angus pretty much always bought a good type. He was very fussy. He liked good action, good looking horses. He's quite pedantic on what he buys. And, um, you know, I think, uh, his work ethic is second to none, and, and, and it's been the same on the farm. Even through COVID, we've had Zoom meetings and pedigree meetings and mating meetings, and, and it's probably the sad thing is he's actually probably now got the best crop of yearlings and the best crop of foals that they've had, and it's taken, you know, years to develop these families and lovely mares. So it's, 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 um, it's a sad to see a lot of hard work going into this. 
Um, it's the, the Australian industry is the most remarkable industry to be involved in on the racing and breeding side, particularly at the moment with the world a bit upside down as it's been for the last 18 months. To see the strength of the Australian industry and the sales this year has been remarkable to watch. I think it's a sensational industry to be involved in and I very much hope one day to get back there to come and see you all again.